Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision lesson. Now with the English language paper one exam just around the corner, what I wanted to offer you guys is a really, really simple and straightforward framework of firstly, what to expect and what to anticipate of this exam paper, okay? What to expect from all five questions within this exam, how to manage yourself when it comes to timings, but also, and most importantly, okay, passing and getting a great grade is the aim of the game. Therefore, what I also want to show you guys is what examiners are looking for. This is what teachers refer to as assessment objectives. Sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. What does AO1, AO3, AO5 mean? So what I also want to do is to offer you guys a very easy, easy and straightforward breakdown of what examiners are looking for from each specific question so that that can guide your focus when you're practicing these questions, okay? So especially if you're currently in year 11, time is of the essence and you need to be churning out lots of these papers, practicing, but also as you're practicing, you are doing so quite strategically with a view to answering exactly what the examiners are looking for, okay? So as you can see behind me, basically, I'm gonna be going over how to manage yourself in terms of timings in section A. So this is the comprehension part of the exam. And of course, also the creative writing part of the exam in section B. But then what I want to explain as well is exactly what examiners are looking for so that when you're answering and practicing these questions, and of course, in the actual exam, you then hit all the different assessment objectives that are required of this paper. So let's begin by talking about the structure, the layout, and also how to manage yourself in terms of timings. Now, remember for the English language paper one exam, you will get one hour, 45 minutes. Of course, if you've got extra time, adjust that timing accordingly. However, let's talk about it just purely in terms of the actual time that's given, which is one hour, 45 minutes. My suggestion in terms of exam technique is always begin the first 10 minutes of this exam. So maybe about 60 seconds, quickly flicking through the entire paper, reading all five questions, getting a lay of the land, highlighting the keywords in the question because the remaining 10 minutes of your initial, uh, of your initial time, spend that time then reading the fiction extract that you are presented with. And because you've read the questions, you then are reading it, looking for strategic pieces of information, okay? Don't get into a panic and then start answering question one, what's going on in the extract? Question two, what's going on in the extract and so on, okay? Be a bit strategic so that you can maximize in the time that you've got, okay? So the first 10 minutes, begin firstly by reading through all five questions, get a lay of the land, highlight the keywords, then afterwards, read the fiction extract that you are presented with. Now remember the first question, so let's say you're working through each of the questions chronologically. You start with question number one. Question number one is really straightforward. You are asked to look usually at the first paragraph of the fiction extract. You're asked to look at the first paragraph and select four statements that are true. You should spend a max of five minutes on this question. This question is really, really simple and straightforward. The only way from my experience that I've seen that students get this wrong is either the right one word responses, okay, actually put in just one word rather than a full sentence. Remember, this is an English exam, so you also need to make sure you're writing in full sentences, okay? So that's the first mistake, and of course, the second major mistake that would lose you marks is if you don't select evidence or select statements that are true from the correct part of the passage, okay? So question number one is really straightforward. Spend five minutes on this question, make sure you write in a full sentence, but you don't need to quote. Question number two within section A is now the language question. You were given a section from the text in a box, okay? So the examiners kind of help you along with this question because you don't have to flick back to the insert. It's right there in front of you. And you're asked how the writer uses language to convey whatever you're asked to look at, okay? Now for this question, make sure you try and spend 10 minutes on this question at least and split that into five minutes per paragraph. Try to aim to write at least two peel paragraphs when I say peel, I mean point, evidence, explanation, and link, okay? Try to do that times two for this question and make sure you are clear on what language means. Language refers to things like alliteration, metaphor, onomatopoeia, simile, also advanced techniques such as, for example, semantic fields, is there an extended metaphor being used, etc. okay? Guys, if you're not clear on what language techniques uh, means or language uh, devices means, please make sure you watch my previous video. I think I created it maybe two or three weeks ago where I go over a complete list of language and structural devices. Watch that so you can kind of be clear, okay? 
That's for question number two. Now for question number three, this is the structure question. Again, just like question number two, it's worth eight marks, so make sure you spend 10 minutes on this question. Aim to write a minimum of at least two pill paragraphs to give yourself a fighting chance of accessing the full eight marks. Now, structure is different to language. Structure refers to how does the text begin? How does it end? Is there a change of focus? Is there a circular structure? Is there a shift of um, zooming in from one character to another character? All of these elements are structure, okay? So make sure when you're writing about structure, a good way to begin, and even one of the bullet points in question number three always asks you to talk about what goes on in the beginning. So select something from the beginning and then maybe in your first field paragraph, juxtapose that and contrast it with either something that goes on in the middle and the end. And then maybe your second pill paragraph could either be something else taken from the middle or how there's a shift of focus, or let's say if another new character is introduced, what's going on there, okay? That's structure. And of course, as I mentioned, it's worth eight marks, just like question number two. Try to aim to write a minimum of two peel paragraphs. That's question number three. Now your fourth question, the final question in section A, this is where you're always given a student statement. A student having read this said, blah, blah, blah. To what extent do you agree? I usually say agree and just say how the writer successfully illustrates the student statement. The reason why I say this is because usually the student st statement doesn't tend to contradict what's actually going on in the extract. So you simply agree and then you use examples of how the writer has used both language and structure to illustrate the student statement as being true and that's why you agree with it, okay? This question is worth 20 marks, therefore spend roughly around 20 minutes on this question and my suggestion is try to aim to write at least a minimum of three pill paragraphs if you can, if you're speedy enough, four pill paragraphs, that would mean you're writing at the rate of say, five minutes per paragraph. Of course, within your paragraphs, you're including stuff like language, structure techniques, and talking about how the student statement, why do you agree with it, okay? That is section A. And that therefore means if you do the math, you are left with 50 minutes to either tackle the descriptive or creative writing question in section B. Now remember, in section B, you always get a choice of two questions. Pick one, don't do both. Usually in the June paper, so this is a summer paper, you're given an image and that's where you've got to do a descriptive piece of writing. Then you've got a statement where you're asked to write a story about something, right? So if you decide to go for the descriptive writing question, I usually suggest kind of thinking about when you're looking at the image, what's going on the outside, take one step in, what's going on the inside, one step further in, look at the central focus, then perhaps the general feelings and so on. I call that my concentric circles, okay? Now, what I mean by that is in terms of laying out your descriptive writing, split it up into five paragraphs. Start off with your setting and weather paragraph, talking about what's going on on the outside of the image. If you're looking at the image, you're thinking, okay, is it, you know, is it a cold day? Is it in a kitchen? Is it outside? Is it in a cold room? Okay, so you describe that. Then your second paragraph, describe what the general atmosphere and mood is in that image. Your third paragraph is now where you talk about the central focus, okay? So like the most obvious thing within the image. Describe that in lots of detail. Then, uh, moving on from your central focus, so looking at the most obvious thing within the image, then try and personify that in your fourth paragraph. Describe what the feelings are of that thing within the image, the central focus, and then have an ever so slight change in your final descriptive writing paragraph. Guys, literally at the beginning of this year, I released a series of descriptive writing plans and essay ideas that you can use for any descriptive writing questions. So please have a look at those videos. It's really, really straightforward actually, to be honest with descriptive writing. It's simply a case of making sure that you have lots and lots um, of words, really, really good advanced language and terminology that you can use to describe the image in front of you. However, my personal favorite, if I was in your position in year 11, if I was sitting this exam, I tend to like to go for a story, okay? I feel like with stories, you can start at one place and you're not restricted by keeping what you're writing about in that one place. You can start off somewhere, but then end in somewhere completely different. And I, again, tend to go for a five paragraph structure with stories, but in this case, I adopt a story mountain framework, okay? So when it comes to stories, always start off your beginning paragraph, describing the setting, describing the weather, setting a sense of mood, then in your build up paragraph, you've got, this is where your character, so if you've got maybe one protagonist, they start going on an adventure, okay? So they start kind of um, having some form of encounter. 
Your third paragraph is your problem paragraph. They come across either a villain or some type of obstacle. Then your fourth paragraph is your resolution paragraph. How do they resolve this issue? Did they run away? Did they fight it? Whatever. And then your final ending paragraph is what happens at the end. Is it a cliffhanger? How they change somehow within the end of the story. I personally like stories because you're not restricted. You can start off at one point where it's all nice and sunny and then end at a different point where it's rainy, cloudy, you know, something terrible has happened because of course there has been a problem. Again, guys, at the beginning of this year and even actually in March, I literally um, released lots and lots of videos with creative writing model answers. Please watch those, especially if you're kind of stumped on creative writing ideas, okay? So that's creative writing versus descriptive writing. Pick one, don't do both. However, what I now want to do is to outline to you guys exactly what examiners are looking for and as you are practicing these questions, as you're getting yourself familiar with the English language paper one exams, Make sure you have these at the back of your mind when you're answering the different questions. Now let's talk about all of the questions and what assessment objectives go with them, okay? What examiner specifically looking for? Now, when it comes to the AOs, the assessment objectives, okay, so the examiners as they're marking your paper, Firstly, remember with question number one, this is the question where you're asked to just find four statements that are true. This tests your AO1. What this simply means is, when you look at the question and you're asked to retrieve information, the correct information, are you able to retrieve and actually answer it correctly? Okay, so this is just basically, are you able to look at the information and retrieve the right amount of information and even the correct information from the question before you and also from the extract, okay? A1 is really, really straightforward. That's what's tested for question number one. Question number two, this is the language question. It tests your AO2. AO2 simply means your awareness of language and or structure. In the case of question number two, you are tested on AO2, but more specifically, your subject knowledge and your terminology when it comes to language techniques and language devices. You wanna be quite heavy when you're going in and describing, you know, how language is used within, you know, whatever bit of evidence that you're given, but also try and zoom in and do some word level analysis, okay? So that's for question number two. It tests your AO2. Also, question number three, test your AO2, but in this case, it tests your awareness of structure. So make sure, of course, you're talking about how it begins, how it ends, change of focus, all of that. That's tested in question number three. Question number four, the student statement, this tests your AO4, your ability to evaluate, your ability to say, okay, I agree with the student statement because the writer successfully uses, for example, a metaphor to show this, or the writer successfully at the beginning establishes a sense of um, fear or panic by starting in the middle of action. It's called a media rate, for example, or the author, for instance, if you want to talk about a really good, clever structural device, you know, they use a cyclical structure. It begins in the same way as it ends. And again, this makes me agree with the student statement. That's part of your evaluation. And of course, also AO4 tests your ability to select the relevant bits of detail to reinforce and support why you agree with the student student or if you decide that you don't agree you obviously use the evidence there to talk about why you don't agree okay that's question number four now number five this is your original piece of writing either descriptive writing or creative writing this question tests your AO5 and your AO6 again it sounds way more complicated than it actually is AO5 it's simply are you able to write and communicate imaginatively? Okay, so when you're writing your story or your descriptive writing, are you able to use really powerful, vivid metaphors? Are you able to use really, really good similes? Are you able to also not end your story in a cliche, okay? So never end your story by saying, oh, and I suddenly woke up and it was a dream or, and everything went dark, okay? That's super cliche, so make sure you don't do that because you are not communicating imaginatively. You're just being, you're just using very cliche terminology, okay? And also cliche phrases. That's AO5, however, creative writing or descriptive writing also tests AO6. Are you able to illustrate an awareness of ambitious language and ambitious vocabulary? Rather than saying things like, he felt sad or I felt sad, things like melancholic, instead of I felt happy, I was ecstatic, I was jovial. Guys, I literally have videos in five minutes, 10 ambitious language and uh, vocabulary that you can use, memorize from today and see a, a mess, massive improvement in your writing 
watch those videos, memorize those words, and use them in your writing, okay? That's gonna help with your AO6, and of course, also, AO6 is your sentence structures. Make sure when you're writing your stories, use a mix of long sentences, okay, so like really descriptive, vivid, vivid um, sentences, but also your one word sentences and also your short, simple sentences to change the pace of your writing, okay? So that's really it when it comes to the upcoming language paper one exam. Be really clear on the different sections. I usually suggest if you're not, um, you know, very disciplined with your timings, work backwards. Okay, start with question number five, four, three, two, one. However, if you're good with your timings and you're quite disciplined, you can simply work through it chronologically. Start with question one all the way to five, but just make sure you are super, super strict with yourself with timings, okay? And of course, as you are practicing and preparing for these upcoming exams, make sure you are super, super clear that you are answering and tackling all of these AOs because that's what the examiners are looking for and that's what you need to secure that grade eight and grade nine. So thanks so much for listening.